good afternoon, everyone. This is a video just to explain the left wing connections of some of the clubs involved. Um, so, yeah, starting off at first with Argentinos Juniors, who are on my list. Um, this is more of a historical thing than a modern thing. They were originally named after the 1886 Haymarket Affair. Um, they were called Los Martires de Chicago. Um, named after the Chicago Martyrs who were um, anarchists who were arrested and maybe charged with a, a bombing. I think it was faked. I'm not sure if they any served time or even executed. I don't know the history that well. I'm just aware of the event and a lot of people who are of anarchist history are aware of the event. Um, they're not as left wing now. They had Maradona um, probably in the 70s or whenever he was a young player. Um, hence they're saying being named after Maradona so there's more of a historical thing than a modern thing and I wanted a club in Argentina to be honest because I've never managed in Argentina before and that brings us nicely on to Austria and what are they called first? yeah St. Polten um, I should have mentioned as well so Argentinos are I think they're just a mid-table club yeah 11th I think it's about 20 Two twenty four, maybe twenty four teams in the league, and so they're going to be a mid table Argentinian team. And Saint Polton are kind of lower end. They're fit to finish tenth this season, and Saint Polton, I think there's again, it's it's not a lot of the, the ones at the beginning of this video are going to be a bit of a stretch because I was trying to find clubs to populate the game, um, but it's quite apolitical in. Austrian and Swiss uh, football so I just kind of picked ones that were vaguely left wing there's a Swiss one you'll see later on um, and they do have a reputation for being a kind of left wing fan base so yeah that's St. Polton um, a bit of a stretch um, bring on to Bosnia and Velas Mostar who have a famous um, fans group called I think the Red Star Army or the Red Army and historically Velas Mostar was the kind of non-nationalistic um, football club in Bosnia or in Yugoslavia before that so they have had a long history of left-wing politics and, and were very close to the communist regime and when it was U Yugoslavia when Yugoslavia was a communist country um, but even before that they are an oppressed organisation under the Nazi occupied Yugoslavia um, Unfortunately, it's got kind of more messy since Yugoslavia broke up. Um, in a lot of ways, obviously, a country not that I'm pro Yugoslavia, but a lot, a lot of ways the country has become a bit of a mess since Yugoslavia broke up in the early 90s. Um, and they tried to keep Yugoslavia together and repel nationalist fan groups and nationalism more widely in the late 80s and the early 90s. And they used to be much beloved by Yugoslavians for their commitment to avoiding nationalism and their innovativeness. They've recently become heavily affiliated with Bosnians as the other club in Mostar, uh, Zorinsky, becomes the Croat club and most of the Serbian population has left. Um, and this has led them further and further into the murky waters of Bosnian nationalism, um, despite having sort of a very left wing fan base. Um, in the initial video, I didn't know any of these things, so I was kind of um, not very interested in them, but this is a very interesting history. I kind of would like to play as them now. Um, and Zorinsky, the, the other team, is. Obviously, significantly better. They're second, or predicted to finish second anyway. And Mostar are kind of at the bottom end of the league. They might even be in a relegation spot at the end of the season. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and the Red Army continues to have strong connections to other left wing football groups across Europe. So they're still quite a left wing organisation. So that wasn't quite as much of a stretch as the um, Argentina and Austrian ones. <coughs> yeah, so come bring us to Locomotive Sophia. And sorry for all the coughing. I think I might have hay fever. Um, the spring is slowly coming on us and Locomotive Sofia are um, not uh, are probably a bit more of a stretch in the vein of Austria and Argentina's teams um, in that Bulgarian football is incredibly um, right wing and there are loads and loads of fascists and not just fascists but Nazis who use swastikas frequently and Nazi salutes involved in their football hooliganism and their ultra movement um, and Lokomotiv Sofia, same as Slavia Sofia, who I think aren't in the league. I should have got the league up before. Um, 
Oh, Slavia Sofia are there as well. Uh, sorry, Slavia Sofia are in the first league and Lokomotiv Sofia are in the lower league. I'm not sure why I picked Lokomotiv over Slavia, but they're both kind of more th famed for not having as many or even not, I think, probably not none, but a lot less Nazis and far right wing football fans. Uh, and as a result, they're kind of derided by the right wing football fan base of Bulgaria for being um, all sorts of homophobic and racist things. Um, and also, the people say they have a terrible atmosphere, which is probably just because they don't have loads of people doing Nazi salutes and uh, sort of flares and shouting racist things at people. But yeah, and then so they, they are looking at the top half of the second league so they I don't know if they're a playoffs but they're kind of looking at the potential promotion in the first year and then getting in the top league and then competing later on from that which brings us nicely down to Chile which is one of the ones I'm particularly excited to play uh, Palestino who are pretty to finish the bottom of the league so they might get relegated I might need to add the second tier um, just in case they do get relegated um, they I've got a really interesting history. So they were founded by Palestinians in Chile in 1920, so in the 1920s, and they wear Palestinian colours, um, which is the white, green, and red you can see there. And they were actually fined in 2014 for shaping the ones. So like, as in the goalkeeper normally wears number one, that that number, but also 10, 15, 11, whatever, and they shaped the one like the state of pa Palestine before the creation of Israel and were fined by the um, Chilean FA for that. So they have a lot of kind of left-wing activism links um, as a result, I think. But even if they don't, just the kind of Palestinian connection makes them very interesting, I think. And here's another club I like as well. So I, the first time I did this, I managed Bohemian second, I think. And they're this kind of... Um, kind of hipstery, hippie club in East Prague um, who are famous for bands not being right wing, which is a big thing again in the Czech Republic. Not quite as bad as Bulgaria, but not that far off. Uh, and famous for fans smoking spliffs and wearing green because their badges are green kangaroo because in 1905 the Prague Zoo received a kangaroo and they commemorated it with the the badge change <coughs> but yeah and so mostly football clubs are right and the bohemians have a, a tradition of being more left wing not incredibly left wing but certainly not certainly very good for the Czech Republic um, which brings me to I've not played as this team before but to Red Star Paris who are in the third tier of French football and they are to finish first so they'll probably come up um I should have said before, I think Bohemians are kind of mid to lower level. They're always near to relegation, but not quite. Um, Red Star are very likely to come up to the second tier of French football, but still, they're still quite far away from winning the league, so it's be a nice long save. And Red Star have got a slightly interesting history as well. Historically, they've always had a, a connection with Paris's left-wing political networks, uh, starting in the interwar period, and mostly because of their name, because of Red Star, which apparently doesn't originally relate to politics. But this bond would become even stronger um, during World War Two, after the Nazis executed former player Rino de la Negra. Um, he was a son of Italian immigrants. So he never played for the team. He was actually a reserve player, but was wounded and captured by the Germans in 1944 um, during an attack by the French re French resistance. And he was a member of <coughs> a communist freedom fighters group called the Mnuchin Group, named after the French Armenian communist anarch uh, activist, sorry, Misak Mnuchin. Uh, his final note to his brother contained the words hello and goodbye to Red Star. And as a result, um, the club kind of became part of the communist law of, of Paris, but also France more broadly. And just as a quick aside as well, Francois Hollande was a fan of Red Star in his youth. He was a recent socialist prime minister of uh, France. So they have some modern history as well. Which brings me on to St. Pauli, who are probably the most famous um, team included uh, although there are a few big Spanish ones later on but um, St Pauli are just quite, quite a famous left wing football club in Germany most people who have followed football in Germany or even just left wing football in general will have heard of them 
they are ready to finish six, so they're kind of um, pushing for promotion probably in, in a year or so. When I well when I manage them anyway, <clears throat> and. Yeah, they're just quite famous for bringing a lot of fans and organising left-wing activism and anti-racist activities in Germany and a big part of the the German ultra-movement as a result. <coughs> and on to Greece. And so this is Atromatos Athene. <coughs> um, so they just, they just have quite a big uh, anti-fascist football supporters group who... Um, do loads of anti-fascist and anti-racist activism in Greece, probably a lot of stuff with the migrants these days um, and I just wanted a team to play players in Greece really, that was the the reason I've never played in Greece before and yeah they're also mid-table brings me to one of my least favourite leagues, uh, the Israel League which I played in on my previous save as well, as Hapoel Tel Aviv who are kind of a middle to upper table league, uh, sorry team uh, Hapoel means worker in Hebrew, sorry. So you've got a lot of Hapoels. I think Maccabi, and and again, it's really fo football is very intersected with politics. The Hapoel clubs tend to be left wing or communist in their origin. The Maccabi clubs tend to be moderate liberal. <coughs> and Baita, um, Jerusalem, are a very right wing club who recently wanted to change their name to include Donald Trump. Um, because he obviously recognised, not obviously, well, he recognised Jerusalem as the capital. I shouldn't say recognised, but he identified it as the capital of Israel, which is a very um, contentious statement for loads of people who aren't um, Zionists or even, I don't even know if it goes as far as right wing Zionists, so probably the only ones that believe Jerusalem should be the capital, I'm not sure. But it certainly angered a lot of people on the left and also Arabs in the country and Palestinians. Um, yeah, and so yeah, Hapo Tel Aviv are upper, upper middle. Which brings us to Livorno. I've got no idea which C League they're in. Um, hopefully this won't take me too long. I checked all of them before, but I didn't check Livorno, who actually might be in the second tier of... Yes, they are. Ah, they're in the second tier of Italian football. They're probably a kind of more famous team as well. So they are in the bottom half of the second tier of Italian football and they have a, a slightly interesting history as well. So they have their roots in the Italian Communist Party and have historically had the, quite, some quite famous communist players like Cristiano Lucarelli who was openly communist and they have loads and loads of fans who hold banners with hammers and sickles and all sorts of communist insignia and they've fans of the club have publicly attacked right-wing political figures such as Silvio Berlusconi and right-wing footballers. I shouldn't call him right-wing, he's a fascist. Um, Paolo Di Canio. Um, so yeah, and they'll be interesting as well because obviously they're in the Italian league so when they go up to the top tier they're going to have to play clubs like Juve and uh, Lazio. <laughs> some quite right-wing clubs but also some just quite quite high quality teams. Which brings on to Lebanon who I did draw in the first um, first video and you'll see me play as in the later videos which is Al Safa or Al Safa Sporting Club Safa SC, they've got a few different names and the Arabic often doesn't translate very well um, yeah and they are in, you'll see it's explained in more detail in my first video playing Safa but they're in Lebanon football clubs are associated with political parties um, they tend to be formally affiliated and Safa are formally affiliated to the Progressive Socialist Party in Lebanon and they have um, roots in the Druze community who are a small like 7 or 8 percent population um, so they, they tend to represent marginalised groups and and tend to have more left-wing fans than the other clubs um, on to Northern Ireland next and this is Cliftonville who are put to finish table I should have said Safa were predicted to finish fourth I think so in the top fives it'd be quite easy to play as them and Clistonville are mid-table and they have a lot of more modern history so they've been very active in left-wing causes in Northern Ireland in the last few decades I don't know much, that much about left-wing history before that but they've been basically advocating and supporting 
commendable causes such as helping refugees, advocating for marriage equality, uh, and tend to have a quite a left-wing fan base that is reflected in those causes. And in fact, in the last three months, um, that's January 2020, Northern Ireland actually legalised gay marriage as well. So uh, it, it is a big issue in Northern Ireland, which is um, a mostly Protestant country, but it's very religiously conservative. A lot of people outside of the UK and even in the UK aren't aware of that. So it's going to be quite a nice insight into Northern Irish politics. Um, perfect. Let's move on to Spain. There's two clubs in Spain that I have. Now, Real Sociedad, um, sometimes called Real San Sebastian, are the other left club I considered, but I didn't want two in the same league because I'm not going to play as both of them. Um, so I picked Bilbao. Sociedad and Bilbao are both based in the Basque Country. They both have... Um, it's both similar level, sixth and seven. So they both have left wing fan bases. Arguably, Real Sociedad is more left wing, but Bilbao provides an extra challenge because Athletic Bilbao are, are not allowed to sign non Basque players. They have a rule. Um, so they tend to be very challenging, and it's a lot of that cultivating youth over years and only buying players um, that you know are going to be able to play. I think it makes for a very interesting challenge. So I'd like to play them later on. Um, and I've got a league in the second tier as well. And also they're looking at Europe, so they could be in the Europa League in a season or so, and hopefully challenging Atletico Madrid and Barcelona and Real Madrid in a few years, but it's been much more difficult with that transfers. I'm more of a wheeler dealer, so I normally buy a lot of players and from abroad at cheap prices and try and cultivate them into being stars. But yeah, Real Vallecano is my second Spanish team, and they're picked to finish third in the second tier, so they'll come up pretty quickly into the first tier of Spanish football. And just like Bilbao, it's slightly different to Bilbao because Bilbao has a Athletic Bilbao has a, a Spanish, sorry, a, a Basque left wing nationalist movement. Uh, Vallecano is more of a just kind of generic left wing activist movement, and they're based in Madrid as well, so they tend to scoop up a lot of Madrid left wing movements and um, especially people who are now alienated or frustrated by Real Madrid. Um, I should also point out Real in Spanish, I think means royal, so hence they're not called uh, royal. And left wing movements tend to be not big republicans, sorry, not big, tend to be republicans and not big royalists. Um, so Real Madrid, and also I have issues with Real Sociedad as a result, um, which is part of the reason why I picked Bilbao at the two. Perfect. And now Switzerland next. They're in the second tier. So it brings us to Winterfur. Winterthur, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm not very versed in Swiss. Uh, and they don't have it's a bit of a stretch of Winterfur. Uh, they're more of a they've done a lot of anti fascist activism, just kind of not a lot, but they've done a lot of banners and fans activism in the stands. Um it's a bit of a stretch, but I, I want to get a club in the Swiss league and they seem to be like one of the more left wing clubs. As I said at the beginning of the video, Austria and Switzerland tend to be quite apolitical with their football, so um, it was difficult to find one, but this is definitely the best of the league, I think, uh, the best of the two top tiers. Which brings me to our last league, which is the second tier of Turkish football, Adana Demispor. Adana Demispor are quite intriguing, actually. They've got um, strong leftist links now, um, and they have connections with clubs like Livorno, as a lot of these clubs do, a lot of these clubs are very heavily connected to each other and support each other. Uh, Adana Demispor um, have links with Livorno specifically, and they've played with Livorno, and they tend to have quite a left-wing fan base, as other fans in the country have attested to. And there's a few other big clubs like Besiktas and Galatasaray that have some left-wing links, but they're much too easy. They're, they're like the best teams in the first league, and they'll they dominate the league every few years, so it just wouldn't be a fun play, fun save. Um, but the, the thing that makes Adana particularly interesting is that their the president of the club is um, apparently an ultra-nationalist. So there's a lot of kind of political division within the institution. And I imagine that what's probably happening is the club are trying to exploit their their reputation as a left-wing fan base, um, despite having high-up people who don't conform to that. And there's some tension, which we could kind of talk about what, if I play as Adana. So, yeah, that would be interesting. And <clears throat> yeah, and I'm also just on long term as well. I wouldn't mind looking into playing for, sorry, managing the Palestinian national team, 
and the Cuban national team. And if some of it, some may have seen in the first video, I include the Palestinian league for this reason, um, so that the Palestinian team is a bit more rounded out and has a bit more um, substance and like youth players. And I can try and buy players as well for Palestine and cultivate them as well. Um, but yeah, thank you for listening to that video, uh, to this video, and hopefully. Um, we've all learned a bit more about left wing connections to football clubs and yeah please um, comment if you have anything to add and you know anything about the local politics more maybe I'm completely wrong about some of these clubs uh, I haven't done a great amount of research but I've done a decent amount of resource, uh, research and I'll include at the bottom um, a list of sources that I used for this um, I should have said quickly as well sorry I don't want to start on my screen I'm going to they're for it to finish sixth, so hopefully after two years they get promoted to the top league, and then we'll try and beat Besiktas and all those clubs. Yeah, and uh, thank you for listening uh, again. Have a nice afternoon, and uh, please subscribe if you want to follow this any further. Thanks, and like the video as well. That would uh, help a bit. People get to know the video more often. More often, um, it will get more hits, and people will see it more. And then maybe I'll get more comments about this stuff. Excellent. Thank you very much.